I park my car in front of the shabby motel, its neon sign flickering erratically, casting an eerie glow over the cracked pavement. The name Whispering Pines Motel seemed almost ironic, given the dilapidated state of the place. It was late, and I needed a place to crash for the night. Little did I know I was about to check into a nightmare. As I stepped into the reception area, the musty scent of old wood and dust assaulted my senses. The fluorescent lights buzzed overhead, and the walls were adorned with faded photographs of smiling families. They seemed to mock the darkness that clung to the corners of the room. A bell jingled as I approached the counter, and a middle-aged man with sunken eyes and a scraggly beard looked up from a tattered magazine. Need a room? He rasped, his voice like gravel. I nodded, trying to shake off the chill creeping up my spine. After a few moments of filling out the paperwork, he handed me a rusty key attached to a plastic tag marked Room 7. Don't go out at night, he said, his eyes narrowing. You never know who or what you might encounter. I chuckled nervously, brushing off his warning. The man simply stared at me, unblinking. I hurried out, eager to escape his gaze. The hallway leading to my room was dimly lit, the flickering lights adding to the oppressive atmosphere. I could hear the soft hum of the wind outside, and I couldn't shake the feeling that something was watching me. I finally reached room 7, inserted the key, and pushed the door open with a creak that echoed in the silence. Inside, the room was as uninviting as I had imagined. The bed was covered with a thin, stained comforter, and the air felt stale. I tossed my bag on the bed and decided to freshen up before settling in for the night. As I turned on the sink, the water sputtered for a moment before flowing steadily, the sound oddly comforting in the eerie stillness. After washing my face, I looked into the cracked mirror above the sink. My reflection stared back at me, looking just as tired as I felt. As I dried my hands, I noticed something strange. A shadow flickered in the corner of my eye. I turned quickly, but nothing was there just the dim light and the peeling wallpaper. I shook off the unease and climbed into bed, hoping sleep would come quickly. As I lay there, staring at the ceiling, I thought about the strange man at the front desk. His warning echoed in my mind, mingling with the sounds of the motel. The wind outside grew stronger, rattling the window as I tried to close my eyes. But sleep eluded me. Suddenly, I heard it, a soft, almost imperceptible whisper. I sat up, straining to listen. It was coming from the hallway. Curiosity peaked. I swung my legs over the side of the bed and slipped on my shoes. I felt a strange pull towards the door, as if someone were beckoning me. Against my better judgment, I opened it and stepped out. The hallway was dark and quiet, but the whispers grew louder, guiding me down the corridor. I walked cautiously, the floorboards creaking beneath my weight. As I approached the end of the hall, I noticed a flickering light coming from a room, room 8. The door was slightly ajar and I could see a faint glow spilling into the hallway. I pushed it open and stepped inside. The room was empty, but the television was on, playing static. I walked closer, the whispers now a chaotic blend of voices, murmuring incoherently. It felt as if the walls were alive with secrets. Suddenly, I heard a soft giggle, and my heart raced. I spun around, expecting to find someone behind me, but I was alone. I took a step back, my instincts screaming for me to leave, but I was frozen in place. The laughter echoed again, clearer this time, and I felt a cold breeze brush past me. Help me, a voice whispered, clear as day. It was a child's voice. Panic surged through me, and I stumbled backward, nearly tripping over the edge of the bed. Who's there? I shouted, trying to sound brave, but my voice trembled. From the corner of the room, a figure began to materialize, a little girl no more than eight years old, her dress tattered and her hair disheveled. She looked up at me with hollow eyes, a mixture of sadness and longing. Help me, she pleaded again, her voice echoing in my mind. I felt a pull toward her, an inexplicable urge to understand what had happened. What do you need? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. I can't leave, she said, her form flickering like the dying light. I'm trapped. A chill ran down my spine as I realized that I was standing in the room of someone who had once stayed here, someone who had never checked out. As I gazed into her eyes, I saw flashes of a past life, darkness, fear, and despair. I felt a wave of sorrow wash over me. How can I help you? I asked, desperation creeping into my voice. Find my mother, she whispered, and tell her I'm here. The air around me grew colder, and the lights flickered violently. I turned to leave, half fear gripping my heart, but the door slammed shut, trapping me inside. Please, she begged, her image growing fainter. You have to help me. I was terrified, 
but I couldn't just leave her. Where is she? I cried, my voice breaking. Where can I find her? The girl pointed towards the window, her form becoming more transparent. Look for the willow tree by the lake. She waits there. And just like that, she vanished, leaving me alone in the dark, static-filled room. The door creaked open and I stumbled back into the hallway, my mind racing. I had to find her mother. I rushed back to my room, grabbed my things, and made my way out of the motel. The wind howled around me as I ran towards the lake, the whispers still echoing in my ears. When I reached the lake, I spotted the willow tree silhouetted against the moonlight. My heart raced as I approached it, breathless and terrified. Beneath the tree, I found a woman, hunched and desolate, her face hidden in her hands. Excuse me, I said, my voice trembling. She looked up, her eyes filled with unshed tears. I met your daughter. The woman's face twisted with a mix of hope and horror. What did you say? She's trapped at the motel. She wants you to know she's here. I managed, my heart breaking for both of them. The woman gasped, her hand flying to her mouth. No, not again. Please, you have to help her, I pleaded. She needs you. Tears streamed down the woman's face as she nodded slowly. I'll come for her, I promise. As I watched her walk away, a sense of relief washed over me. I turned to leave, but as I glanced back, I swear I saw the faint outline of the little girl standing by the tree, smiling. I hurried back to my car, feeling the weight of the encounter settling in my chest. The motel faded in the distance as I drove away, but the whispers lingered, a reminder that some tales are never truly finished. Story the End Story number two. I pulled into the parking lot of the Pine Hollow Motel as dusk fell over the sleepy town. I was road weary, craving nothing more than a hot shower and a chance to stretch my legs. The old motel looked like it hadn't seen a facelift since the 70s, with peeling paint and flickering neon signs, but I didn't care. A bed was a bed and I was too exhausted to be picky. As I walked into the dimly lit lobby, the scent of stale cigarette smoke and something musty filled the air. Behind the desk stood a frail man with wild gray hair and a face lined with the burdens of time. He barely looked up from the ledger he was scribbling in. Room for one? He muttered, barely making eye contact. Yeah, I replied, sliding a few crumpled bills across the counter. How much? He grunted, his fingers shaking slightly as he counted the cash. Fifty a night. You want a key? I nodded, and he handed me a rusted key with a number tag, nine. I glanced at the key, feeling an odd sense of foreboding wash over me. There was something unsettling about the way his eyes darted nervously to the wall clock that ticked loudly in the silence. Is... is there anything I should know about the area? I asked, trying to break the ice. Any good places to eat? He looked up, his gaze locking onto mine for a moment before he spoke. Just don't wander too far. Stay close to the motel. His words made my skin prickle, but I shrugged it off as just the ramblings of a small-town eccentric. I grabbed my bag and headed for room 9, the worn carpet squishing under my sneakers. The hall was dark and eerily quiet, the only sound being the distant hum of the air conditioning. I opened the door to my room, the hinges creaking in protest. Inside, the room was sparse but clean enough. There was a bed, a dresser, and a small TV mounted on the wall. A faint chill hung in the air, but I figured the old heater just needed time to kick in. I tossed my bag on the bed and turned on the TV, hoping for some distraction. As I settled in, the night crept on and I could hear the wind howling outside, sending shivers through the thin walls. The faint sound of voices drifted in from somewhere nearby, but I couldn't make out any words. Maybe other guests? I felt a twinge of unease, but pushed it aside. After a long shower, I wrapped myself in a towel and sat on the edge of the bed, scrolling through my phone. Just as I began to lose track of time, I heard it. A soft knocking at my door. It was rhythmic, almost too deliberate. I paused, heart racing. Hello? I called out, trying to sound more confident than I felt. No answer came. The knocking continued, and I got up, my curiosity peaked. As I reached for the doorknob, a cold gust of wind blew through the cracked window, chilling me to the bone. I hesitated, debating whether to open it. Finally, I swung the door open, but the hallway was empty, dimly lit and silent. Must have been the wind, I thought, stepping back inside, closing the door firmly behind me. Just as I turned around, a sudden chill swept through the room. The temperature dropped drastically, and I shivered, feeling an inexplicable sense of dread. I shook my head, telling myself it was just fatigue. I crawled into bed, pulling the covers up to my chin, but sleep wouldn't come. I kept hearing whispers, faint but insistent, weaving through the silence. It felt as if someone was trying to tell me something, their voices muffled and distorted. 
As the clock ticked past midnight, I finally dozed off, but it wasn't long before I was jolted awake by the sound of more knocking. This time, it was louder, almost urgent. I glanced at the clock, 1.03 a.m. What the hell? I murmured, rubbing my eyes. I swung my legs over the side of the bed, heart pounding, and made my way to the door once more. Opening it, I peered down the dim corridor, but once again, nothing. Just the stillness, and then the temperature dropped even more, an unnatural cold wrapping around me. I took a step back, the hairs on my neck standing on end. Just then, a flicker of movement caught my eye. At the end of the hallway stood a shadowy figure. It was tall, indistinct, but I could feel its gaze piercing through the darkness. Panic surged through me, and I slammed the door shut, locking it tight. My mind raced with thoughts, trying to reason it all away. Maybe I'm just tired, maybe I'm just imagining things. But the knocking returned, more frantic this time. I felt paralyzed, rooted to the spot, my heart thumping louder than the knocks. I grabbed my phone, intending to call the front desk, but as I looked down, the screen flickered and went black. Great, I muttered, throwing it onto the bed. I turned my attention back to the door. The knocking had stopped, but I could still hear the whispers, now clearer, echoing through the room. Help us, help us. With a surge of adrenaline, I bolted for the door, ready to make a run for it. As I grabbed the doorknob, I felt a cold hand grip my wrist, freezing me in place. The air grew heavy, and the whispers turned into a cacophony of desperate cries. Help us, it's not safe. With a primal scream, I yanked the door open and fled into the night, leaving behind the haunting cries of those trapped in the shadows. I ran to my car, heart racing, fumbling with my keys, desperate to escape. As I sped away from the Pine Hollow Motel, I glanced back in the rearview mirror. The old building stood silent and still, but I could have sworn I saw faces peering out from the windows, lost souls begging for release. I drove into the night, the road stretching endlessly ahead of me, but deep down I knew I'd never forget Room 9. Some doors should never be opened and some tales are better left untold. Story number three. The flickering neon sign of the Sunset Motel buzzed like an angry bee as I pulled into the gravel parking lot. The sun had long since dipped below the horizon, leaving the sky a bruised shade of purple, and I was weary from hours on the road. I glanced at the clock, almost midnight. I needed a place to rest for the night, and this was the only motel for miles. As I stepped inside the lobby, a chime rang softly, announcing my presence. The air felt thick and stale, and the worn carpet squished under my feet. Behind the counter sat a woman with wild hair and deep-set eyes that glimmered like old coins. She looked up, her face breaking into a smile that didn't quite reach her eyes. Welcome to the Sunset Motel, she said, her voice a low whisper. Checking in? Yeah, just for the night, I replied, trying to keep the unease from creeping into my voice. She slid a weathered ledger toward me this day, and I scribbled my name, glancing around the dimly lit room. Room 12, she said handing me an old brass key that felt heavier than it looked. Just keep to yourself and don't let the shadows play tricks on you. Ah, uh, right. Thanks, I said, feeling a chill race down my spine at her words. I grabbed my bag and made my way down the narrow corridor lined with faded photographs of smiling families. At least they looked happy. The air grew cooler as I approached room 12. I hesitated for a moment, my heart beating wildly in my chest, then opened the door. The room was dark and I flipped the light switch, only to be greeted by a dim flicker. The walls were a sickly yellow, peeling in places, and the bedspread was an unsettling floral pattern. After tossing my bag onto the bed, I decided to freshen up. The bathroom was small and cramped, with a mirror that was slightly fogged, making it hard to see my reflection clearly. As I splashed water on my face, I caught a glimpse of movement in the corner of my eye, a shadow flitting past the door. Just my imagination, I muttered shaking my head. I finished washing up and plopped down on the bed, trying to settle my racing heart. I turned on the TV, hoping to drown out the oppressive silence. Hours passed as I flipped through channels. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. The shadows in the room seemed to grow longer, creeping closer with every flicker of the screen. It was almost as if the motel itself was alive, breathing and watching me. Suddenly the TV cut to static, the screen flickering as a voice crackled through. It sounded faint, distorted, but I could make out a few words. Help. Trapped. Can't leave. My heart stopped. I shot up from the bed, frantically pressing buttons on the remote, but nothing worked. The voice grew louder, more insistent. Help us. Help us. I dashed to the door, flinging it open, but the hallway was empty. 
the flickering lights casting eerie shadows on the walls. Panic surged through me, and I rushed back inside, locking the door behind me. I grabbed my phone, but there was no signal. Get a grip, I told myself, taking deep breaths to calm the rising panic. I tried to convince myself it was just the stress of travel, that I was tired and imagining things. As I paced the room, the knocking began, a soft, rhythmic sound coming from the wall beside the bed. It started slow but grew louder, more frantic. Help us, the voice echoed again, now clearer. You have to help us. My heart pounded as I backed away from the wall. I could feel the room closing in around me. The air grew heavy, suffocating. I stumbled back to the bed, staring wide-eyed at the wall as the knocking intensified. Suddenly, the sound stopped. Silence enveloped me, thick and oppressive. I glanced at the clock. It was past 2 a.m. Just as I was about to gather my things and make a run for it, I heard it. A soft giggle, like children playing, echoing from the hallway. Curiosity and fear waged war in my mind. I crept to the door and peeked out, but the hallway was empty, the shadows twisting into strange shapes. This is insane, I whispered to myself, but I felt drawn to the laughter. Against my better judgment, I stepped out into the corridor, following the sound. It led me to room 14, where the door stood slightly ajar. The laughter echoed again, and I pushed the door open, peering inside. The room was dark, the curtains drawn tight. I took a tentative step inside, and the laughter ceased, replaced by an unsettling stillness. Hello? I called out, my voice trembling. No answer came, but the air felt charged with something unexplainable. Just then, the door slammed shut behind me, plunging the room into darkness. I spun around, heart racing, but the door wouldn't budge. Panic surged as I fumbled for my phone, only to realize it was still in my room. Help us! Help us! The voices cried out again, louder this time, swirling around me like a gust of wind. I pressed my back against the wall, trying to find a way out, but the room felt like a cage. Suddenly, the curtains began to flutter, and the temperature dropped drastically. I could see my breath in front of me. Shapes emerged from the darkness, hazy figures of children with hollow eyes, their faces twisted in agony. They reached out towards me, their mouths moving in silent screams. Please, help us, one of them wailed, tears streaming down its face. I felt a surge of terror, my heart racing as I backed away, desperately searching for a way to escape. I can't help you. I'm just a traveler, I screamed, the words escaping my lips in a frantic rush. The figures moved closer, the shadows thickening around me, their cries merging into a haunting melody of despair. You have to check out before it's too late. In that moment, clarity struck me. The woman at the front desk, her warning about the shadows. It all made sense. I had to leave, and I had to leave now. With newfound determination, I lunged for the door, throwing my weight against it. It burst open, and I stumbled back into the hallway, the laughter fading into a cacophony of sorrow behind me. I sprinted back to room 12, the shadows trailing close behind, whispering my name. Grabbing my bag, I flung the door open and raced down the corridor, not daring to look back. The lobby was dark, the woman behind the desk absent. No time, I yelled, pushing through the front door and out into the night. The cool air hit my face, grounding me as I dashed to my car. I could still hear the echoes of the children's cries behind me, pleading for release. I fumbled with my keys, my hands shaking and finally got the door open, slamming it shut as I jumped into the driver's seat. As I sped away, I dared a glance in the rearview mirror. The Sunset Motel stood ominously against the night sky, its windows dark and uninviting. But in the reflection I swore I saw them, faces pressed against the glass, eyes wide with fear and longing. I drove until dawn broke, the rising sun washing away the darkness, but the chill in my bones remained. Some places hold secrets too deep, shadows too dark, and some motels are just better left behind. Story number four. As I pulled up to the faded Sunnyvale Motel, the last remnants of daylight disappeared behind the horizon. The neon sign buzzed to life, casting an eerie glow that flickered against the peeling paint of the building. It looked like it hadn't seen a fresh coat of paint in decades. I had planned to drive through the night, but fatigue had settled in and I needed a place to rest. The lobby was dimly lit, and the air was thick with the scent of old wood and something else, something rotten. An elderly woman sat behind the counter, her hair pulled back tightly in a bun with glasses perched on the edge of her nose. She looked up as I entered, her eyes narrowing suspiciously. Need a room? She asked, her voice raspy as if each word took effort. I nodded, pulling out my wallet. Room four, she said, handing me a tarnished key. You'll want to avoid the fourth, fourth floor. 
Strange things happen up there. I chuckled nervously, trying to brush off the warning. Thanks, but I think I can handle it. I wasn't about to let an old wives' tale scare me. I dragged my suitcase down the hallway, its wheels clattering on the cracked tile floor. The fluorescent lights flickered ominously above me, casting long shadows that seemed to reach out. As I approached room four, the door creaked open slightly as if inviting me inside. The room was small and cramped, with a single bed pushed against one wall. The faded floral wallpaper peeled at the corners, and a musty odor lingered in the air. I tossed my bag on the bed and took a moment to gather myself. Tired and eager to settle in, I plopped down on the bed, sinking into the thin mattress. Just as I was about to turn on the TV, I heard a soft knocking sound. It was faint but persistent, coming from the wall adjacent to my bed. I strained to listen, the knock repeating every few seconds. My heart raced as I wondered what could be making that sound. Curiosity got the better of me, and I stood up to investigate. The knocking continued, rhythmic and eerie, like a heartbeat. I pressed my ear against the wall, hoping for an explanation, but instead I felt an icy chill brush against my skin. Hello? I called out tentatively. No response. The knocking stopped abruptly, leaving a heavy silence in its wake. I took a step back, unsure of what to think. Just then, a sudden wave of exhaustion washed over me, and I felt the weight of sleep pulling at my eyelids. I decided to shake off the unease and turned on the TV for some background noise. The static buzzed in the room, and I finally settled in under the covers. I was deep in sleep when I was jolted awake by a voice, a soft whisper echoing in my ear. Help me. The sound was haunting, lingering in the stillness of the night. I sat up abruptly, heart pounding, but the room was empty. I glanced at the clock. It was just past midnight. Pushing the covers aside, I stepped out of bed, adrenaline coursing through my veins. The voice had been so clear. Help me. I could still hear it, echoing in my mind as if it were coming from the very walls of the motel. My pulse quickened as I made my way to the door. I opened it cautiously, peering into the dimly lit hallway. To my left, the corridor stretched endlessly. But to my right, I saw a flickering light beneath the door of room 5. The whisper grew louder, beckoning me. Compelled by an unseen force, I moved toward room 5, my heart racing. I hesitated for a moment before knocking. Hello? I called out. The door creaked open slightly, and I was met with darkness. Is anyone there? I ventured inside. The room was empty, but the air felt charged, thick with an unsettling energy. I felt a cold breeze sweep past me, and the light flickered ominously. My instincts screamed for me to leave, but I was rooted to the spot. Help me. The voice pleaded again, this time more urgent. I turned towards the source of the sound. A closet door stood slightly ajar, swaying gently as if beckoning me closer. Taking a deep breath, I approached the closet and pulled the door open. Inside, I found nothing but old coats and a dusty suitcase. But as I peered deeper, I noticed a small, worn-out doll sitting in the corner, its porcelain face cracked and expressionless. Just then, the door behind me slammed shut, making me jump. I spun around, panic setting in. Let me out, I shouted, rattling the doorknob, but it wouldn't budge. The whispers crescendoed into a chorus of desperate cries. Help me, they echoed, filling the room. My heart raced as I tried to figure out what was happening. I pounded on the door, adrenaline surging through me. Suddenly, the lights flickered and went out, plunging the room into darkness. Help me. The voice was right next to me now, cold and breathy. I stumbled back, knocking over the doll, which tumbled to the ground, the sound echoing in the silence. I could see a faint glow from the corner of my eye, an ethereal light flickering like a candle flame. I turned to it, heart pounding, and saw the ghostly figure of a little girl, her face pale and hollow, eyes wide with sorrow. You have to help me find her, she cried, her voice a mixture of desperation and fear. She's been lost for so long. I couldn't speak, my breath caught in my throat. Who? I finally managed to ask, my voice trembling. My mother. She left me here. Her voice cracked, and I felt a pang of sadness. Where is she? I asked, trying to keep my fear at bay. The girl pointed towards the closet, tears streaming down her ghostly face. She never came back for me. I can't leave until she does. Determined to help her, I knelt down and picked up the doll. What is this? I asked, holding it up. The girl's eyes lit up with recognition. That was mine. She promised to come back for me, but she never did. I'll help you, I said, my resolve strengthening. I'll find her. The girl smiled faintly, and the room began to tremble as if the very walls were responding to our connection. In that moment, the door suddenly swung open, and I stumbled out, the girl's spirit fading, but her gaze still fixed on me. 
Thank you, she called out, her voice now a distant echo. Find her! I dashed back to my room, adrenaline pumping through me. I had to know more about the girl and her mother. Racing to the reception desk, I found the elderly woman still sitting there, staring blankly at the wall. Do you know anything about room five? I asked urgently. She looked up slowly, a flicker of recognition crossing her face. That room hasn't been occupied in years. A little girl went missing there a long time ago. Missing? My stomach dropped. What happened to her? They say her mother abandoned her, leaving the girl trapped between this world and the next. The woman replied, her voice barely a whisper. Many have heard her cries for help, but no one ever believed. I felt a surge of determination. I'm going to help her find her mother, I declared, my heart racing. The woman shook her head, fear creeping into her eyes. It's too late. You can't help the dead. Ignoring her words, I grabbed my bag and rushed out of the motel. The air was thick with a heavy mist, and the night felt alive with energy. I had to find the mother. Following the pull in my gut, I raced to the lake behind the motel. It was shrouded in darkness and the water glimmered under the moonlight. I scanned the area searching for any sign of the woman. And then I saw her, a figure standing by the water's edge, her silhouette faint yet familiar. Excuse me, I shouted, my voice echoing in the night. The woman turned and as she stepped closer, I recognized her from the photographs I had seen in the lobby. She was the missing mother. Where is she? I gasped, out of breath. Your daughter needs you. She's waiting for you at the motel. The woman's eyes widened with horror and disbelief. My daughter, she whispered, tears streaming down her face. I thought I lost her forever. Please, she's trapped. She needs you, I urged, the urgency of the moment overwhelming me. The woman nodded slowly, a flicker of hope igniting in her eyes. Take me to her. Together, we rushed back to the motel, our footsteps echoing in the night. I led her to room five, my heart pounding in anticipation. When we entered, the air felt charged with electricity, the very walls seeming to breathe with life. Can you hear her? I asked, the whispers returning, filling the room. The mother nodded, tears spilling down her cheeks as she called out her daughter's name. Sweetheart, I'm here, I'm so sorry. The ghostly figure of the little girl appeared radiant and ethereal. Mommy, she cried, her voice. Story number five. The Whispering Pines Motel stood alone on a stretch of highway flanked by dense woods. I pulled in, desperate for a place to rest after a long day of driving. The sun dipped below the horizon, leaving the sky streaked with purple and gray. The neon sign buzzed softly, flickering as if it might fail at any moment. I stepped out of my car, the gravel crunching under my boots, and felt an immediate chill in the air. As I entered the lobby, the bell above the door chimed, echoing through the empty room. The air inside was thick and stale, the kind that clung to your skin. A middle-aged man stood behind the counter, his eyes sunken and weary. He glanced up, nodding slightly as I approached. Checking in? He asked, his voice low and gravelly. Yeah, just for the night, I replied, trying to ignore the strange sense of unease creeping in. I handed him a few bills and he slid a brass key across the counter. Room 8, he said, his gaze darting to the window where the last light of day slipped away. Do you have any recommendations for dinner? I asked, hoping to lighten the mood. There's a diner a few miles down the road, but be careful at night, he said, his eyes narrowing. Some folks say the woods are different after dark. Different how? I asked, intrigued despite myself. He shrugged, glancing back out the window. Just keep your doors locked and don't let anyone in, no matter what. I nodded, feeling a shiver run down my spine. Got it. Thanks. With the key in hand, I made my way down the dimly lit corridor. The air grew cooler as I approached room eight, a sense of foreboding wrapping around me like a shroud. I opened the door and stepped inside, flipping the light switch. The room was small and simple, a bed, a nightstand, and a tiny desk with a chair. The wallpaper was peeling and the carpet was stained in places. I tossed my bag onto the bed and sighed, wishing I had opted for a different motel. After freshening up, I decided to grab a bite to eat. The diner was just as the man had described, dilapidated, and nearly empty, save for a few patrons scattered at the counter. The food was mediocre at best, but I was too tired to care. As I ate, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. When I returned to the motel, I felt a strange tension in the air. I made my way back to room eight and locked the door behind me, ready to settle in for the night. The TV flickered on, casting a dim glow in the room, and I sank into the bed, trying to shake off the unease that clung to me. I drifted off to sleep, 
but was jolted awake a few hours later by the sound of knocking. My heart raced as I glanced at the clock. It was nearly 2 a.m. The knocking came again, more insistent this time, echoing through the silence of the room. Hello? I called out, my voice shaky. No response came, just the relentless knocking. I felt my heart hammer in my chest as I climbed out of bed, peering through the peephole in the door. The hallway was empty, but I could see a shadow moving just outside my door. What do you want? I shouted, trying to sound brave, but fear seeped into my voice. The knocking stopped abruptly. I stood there, heart pounding, waiting for a response. Just as I was about to step back, I heard a soft voice whispering from the other side. Please, let me in. My breath caught in my throat. It was a woman's voice, low and pleading. I just need to get away from them, please. I'm scared. The urge to open the door pulled at me, but I remembered the man's warning. Who are you? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. Just, just let me in, she begged again, her voice trembling. I can't stay out here. They're coming for me. I hesitated, my hand hovering over the doorknob. Something felt very wrong, but the desperation in her voice tugged at my heartstrings. I can't. I don't know who you are, I replied, my voice shaking. Please, you have to help me, she cried. The sound was filled with raw terror, and my heart ached for her, but I shook my head, backing away from the door. The knocking started again, louder and more frantic. Let me in. They'll take me if you don't. No, I shouted back, my voice cracking. I can't. There was a pause, and then the whispers returned, and this time a chorus of voices rising in a haunting melody. Help us. Help us. I stumbled back, fear gripping me like a vice. I knew I had to get out of there. With shaking hands, I grabbed my phone and called the front desk, but there was no answer. The line was, was dead. Desperate, I decided to escape. I rushed to the window, only to find it locked tight. The knocking turned into pounding, and I could hear the woman's voice melding with the others, their cries growing more urgent. Help us! Let us in! In a frenzy, I yanked the window open and climbed out, landing hard on the gravel below. The cool air hit me like a slap, and I sprinted toward my car, heart racing. I fumbled with my keys, nearly dropping them in my panic. As I started the engine, I glanced back at the motel. The shadows seemed to shift and sway, and I swore I saw figures lurking in the darkness, their faces twisted in anguish. The woman's voice echoed in my mind, a haunting plea for help. I tore out of the parking lot, tires screeching against the gravel. The road stretched ahead, dark and endless. I didn't look back, but the chill in the air lingered, wrapping around me like a ghostly embrace. As I drove away, the neon sign flickered one last time before plunging into darkness. I knew I had escaped, but the voices haunted me, a reminder of the secrets that lay hidden in the Whispering Pines motel. Some guests never checked out, and their cries would echo in the night forever. Story the end. Story number six. The sky had just begun to darken as I pulled into the parking lot of the Evergreen Motel. Its neon sign buzzed intermittently, flickering like a heartbeat, and the cracked pavement seemed to thrum with the echoes of the past. I was traveling cross country, and this motel was my last chance for a good night's sleep before hitting the road again. The lobby was sparsely decorated, with a few faded photographs hanging crookedly on the walls. An old-fashioned bell sat on the counter, and I rang it hesitantly. Moments later, a middle-aged man appeared, his face etched with weariness. Evening, he grunted. Need a room? Yeah, just for the night, I replied, handing over my ID. Room 9, he said, sliding a tarnished key across the counter. You'll want to steer clear of the second floor. Strange things happen up there. I forced a chuckle, brushing off the warning as an old wives' tale. Thanks, I'll keep that in mind. I took the key and made my way to the room. Room 9 was small but clean, with a single bed, a wooden dresser, and a window that looked out onto the parking lot. I dropped my bag on the bed and took a moment to unwind, letting the tension of the road dissipate. After a few minutes, I decided to freshen up, heading into the tiny bathroom. As I stood in front of the mirror, splashing cold water on my face, I caught a glimpse of something strange in my reflection. For just a heartbeat, I thought I saw a figure standing behind me, but when I turned around, the room was empty. Shaking my head, I dismissed it as fatigue, playing tricks on my mind. After my shower, I flopped onto the bed, flipping through the channels on the TV. I was soon lost in the mundane noise of late-night shows, but just as I was beginning to doze off, I heard a soft tapping sound. At first, I thought it was just the TV, but then I realized it was coming from the wall adjacent to my bed. Hello? I called out, my voice barely above a whisper. The tapping continued, now more insistent. 
It felt rhythmic, almost like a heartbeat, echoing through the stillness of the room. Curiosity got the better of me, and I pressed my ear against the wall. Help! A faint voice whispered through the barrier, chilling my spine. I pulled away quickly and tracked heart racing. Who's there? I asked, but the only answer was silence. The knocking started again, but this time it was accompanied by a soft cry. Help me, please. Panic set in. I had to get out of this room. I grabbed my phone and decided to go for a walk around the motel to clear my head. The night air was cool and refreshing as I stepped outside. The parking lot was eerily quiet, the shadows stretching long under the flickering lights. As I wandered around, I spotted an old swing set in a small playground behind the motel. The swings creaked gently in the breeze, and I felt an odd compulsion to investigate. As I approached, I noticed something glinting in the moonlight. An old bracelet tangled in the grass. I picked it up, the metal cool against my skin. It was delicate, with tiny charms hanging from it. Suddenly, I felt a presence beside me, and when I turned, I saw her. The girl was no older than ten, dressed in a faded white dress, her hair hanging in tangled curls. She looked at me with wide, sorrowful eyes. You found my bracelet, she whispered, her voice a soft breeze in the still night. Who are you? I stammered, unable to tear my gaze away from her haunting figure. I'm Lucy. I used to stay here, she said, pointing toward the motel. But I can't leave. Leave? Why can't you leave? I asked, my heart racing. I'm stuck. They took me, and I need help. Her voice trembled as she spoke, and I felt an overwhelming urge to assist her. Who took you? I asked urgently. The man in room five. He promised to take me home, but he never did, she said, her eyes filling with tears. What happened to you? I pressed, desperation creeping into my voice. Lucy hesitated, her gaze drifting towards the motel. He, he hurt me. I tried to escape, but I couldn't find my way back. Lucy, I'll help you. I promise, I said, determination surging through me. But I need to know where he is. Room five, she whispered, pointing to the door at the end of the hallway. He's still there. I nodded, my heart pounding as I turned toward the motel. The air felt charged with energy, and I could sense Lucy's presence beside me as I approached the door to room five. I hesitated for a moment, my breath hitching in my throat. Gathering my courage, I knocked on the door. The sound echoed ominously in the quiet night. A moment later, the door creaked open, revealing a disheveled man with hollow eyes and a wild look about him. What do you want? He snarled, his voice low and menacing. I need to know about Lucy, I said, my voice steady despite my fear. Get lost, he growled, trying to slam the door shut, but I pushed it open. Lucy is dead because of you. I shouted, feeling the rage boiling within me. The man's expression shifted to one of anger, but before he could react, I felt a surge of energy behind me. Leave him alone! Lucy's voice echoed in the room, and the temperature dropped dramatically. The man's eyes widened in fear as the ghostly figure of the girl materialized beside me, glowing with an ethereal light. Lucy? He stammered, backing away from us. Why did you take me? She demanded, her voice filled with both fury and sadness. You lied to me! I was trying to help you. I didn't mean to, he stuttered, desperation creeping into his tone. But Lucy shook her head, determination set in her features. You hurt me. You need to face what you did. The air thickened with tension, and I could feel Lucy's anger manifesting as a tangible force. I stepped back, watching as the man crumpled to the ground, fear etching his features. I never wanted to hurt you, he pleaded, but Lucy wouldn't relent. Face it, she cried, her voice rising in intensity. You can't hide from what you did. With that, the room darkened, shadows twisting and swirling around the man. I felt a cold breeze rush past me as the shadows began to envelop him. He screamed, clawing at the air, but it was too late. Lucy, it's over, I called out, but she stood resolute, her expression one of fierce determination. Now you will know my pain, she shouted, and in a blinding flash of light, the man disappeared into the darkness. I stumbled back, breathing heavily as the light faded. Lucy turned to me, her eyes now filled with gratitude and relief. Thank you, she said softly. You helped me set him free. I watched as her form began to glow brighter, her features softening. You can go now, Lucy. You're free, I whispered, tears brimming in my eyes. With a final smile, she nodded. Thank you for believing in me. And in an instant, she was gone, leaving behind a warm, lingering light. I stood in the now quiet room, feeling the weight of the world lift from my shoulders. The air was clear and the oppressive feeling that had settled in the motel had vanished. I turned to leave, glancing back at room five one last time. The shadows had lifted, and as I stepped outside, 
I felt a renewed sense of peace. The Evergreen Motel no longer felt haunted. It was simply a place of stories, echoes of a time long past. As I got into my car and drove away, I couldn't help but smile. I had not only helped Lucy find her peace, but had also released the motel from its dark past. Some tales linger, but others find their resolution, and sometimes all it takes is a little belief. Story number seven. The old Oakwood Motel loomed ahead, a relic of a bygone era, with peeling paint and flickering lights that barely illuminated the parking lot. It was the only place to stay for miles, and after hours on the road, I didn't have much of a choice. The sky was a bruised purple, and the sun had long set, leaving a heavy silence in its wake. As I stepped into the lobby, the air felt stale, thick with dust and neglect. A bell above the door chimed, its sound echoing through the empty room. The only sign of life was the middle-aged man behind the counter, his eyes deep-set and weary. He looked up, and a faint, forced smile crossed his face. Welcome to Oakwood Motel, he said, his voice gravely. What can I do for you? Just need a room for the night, I replied, trying to ignore the chill that crept up my spine. Room 9 is available, he said, sliding an old key across the counter. Check-in is simple. Just sign here. I scribbled my name in the ledger, glancing at the tattered wallpaper and the faded photographs of happier times lining the walls. There was something unsettling about the place, but I brushed it off as exhaustion. Uh, do you have Wi-Fi? I asked as I pocketed the key. Only near the lobby, he replied, his eyes darting toward the window. But you won't need it much. The woods behind the motel can be... distracting. Distracting? I asked. My curiosity peaked. Just keep your doors locked, he warned, his expression turning serious. And don't wander too far at night. Some say the ghosts of this place don't take kindly to visitors. I laughed nervously, waving his words away. Thanks for the warning, I said, trying to lighten the mood. I grabbed my bag and headed toward room 9, the floorboards creaking beneath my feet. The room was dim, lit only by a single lamp in the corner. I dropped my bag on the bed and turned on the TV, hoping to drown out the oppressive silence. As the screen flickered to life, I noticed a strange feeling in my gut, an unsettling awareness that I was not alone. The night dragged on, and, and I found it hard to shake off the man's warning. I tried to focus on the TV, but the shadows in the corners of the room seemed to deepen, twisting into shapes that made my heart race. After a while, I decided to try to get some sleep, pulling the thin blanket up to my chin. At some point during the night, I was jolted awake by the sound of muffled voices outside my door. I listened intently, straining to make out the words. It sounded like a conversation, but I couldn't decipher what they were saying. I sat up, heart pounding, and glanced at the clock. It was just after 2 a.m. Curiosity got the better of me, and I tiptoed to the door, peering through the peephole. The hallway was dark, but I could see silhouettes moving just outside. Panic set in as the voices grew louder, a cacophony of whispers. She's here. She has to know. I stepped back, feeling a chill race down my spine. Who were they talking about? Suddenly, a loud bang echoed down the hallway, causing me to jump. I stumbled back to the bed, my heart racing. After what felt like an eternity, the voices faded, replaced by an eerie silence. I shook my head, trying to dismiss the unease that settled in my gut. Just as I was about to settle back into bed, I heard a soft knock on my door. Hello? A voice called out, delicate and almost melodic. Can you let me in? The voice sent shivers down my spine. Who are you? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. I need your help, she said, her voice trembling. Please, let me in. I hesitated, torn between fear and compassion. What's wrong? I can't stay out here. They're coming for me. She pleaded, panic lacing her words. Who's coming? I demanded, my heart pounding in my chest. Please, she cried. Just, just let me in. I can't go back. The urgency in her voice tugged at my heartstrings, but I remembered the man's warning. I can't. I shouted back, fear overwhelming me. The knocking grew more frantic. You have to help me. If you don't, they'll take me. Just then, the lights flickered and I felt a rush of cold air sweep through the room. I backed away, feeling trapped. The door rattled as she continued to plead. Help me. Please. I couldn't take it anymore. I rushed to the window and opened it, hoping to escape, but the moment I did, a gust of wind slammed it shut again. My heart raced as I turned back to the door where the knocking had stopped. Are you still there? I called, my voice barely above a whisper. Silence answered me. I took a step back, my heart pounding in my ears. Then, without warning, the door swung open, creaking ominously as it revealed an empty hallway. I peered out cautiously. The corridor was dark and still. Hello? I called, my voice echoing in the silence. 
Nothing. Just the oppressive quiet of the motel. With trembling hands, I reached for the key and locked the door, panic gripping me. I stumbled back to the bed, my heart racing. I lay there, wide awake, eyes darting to every shadow, every flicker of light. Just as I began to settle down, the phone on the bedside table rang, shattering the silence. I jumped, heart racing as I reached for it. Hello, I said, my voice shaky. Help us, a whisper echoed through the receiver, chilling me to the bone. You have to help us. Who is this? I demanded, but the line went dead. I dropped the phone, feeling the weight of despair settle around me. I needed to get out. I grabbed my bag and rushed to the door, but as I reached for the handle, the knocking began again, louder and more frantic. Let me in. They're coming. I paused, torn between my instinct to flee and the desperate cries for help. But as I looked through the peephole, I saw nothing but darkness. Leave me alone, I shouted, but the knocking only grew louder, pounding like a heartbeat. I couldn't take it anymore. I flung open the door and bolted down the hallway, my heart racing. I ran past room eight, room nine, and down to the stairs, feeling the chill of the shadows closing in behind me. I burst into the lobby, but the man was gone. The lobby was empty, devoid of life, and the lights flickered ominously. I ran to the front door, yanking it open, but it slammed shut as I reached for it. Let me out, I screamed, pounding on the door. The lights flickered again, and I felt the presence of something cold and dark behind me. I spun around, but there was nothing there, only shadows dancing along the walls. Help us. The voices echoed once more, filling the air with despair. With a surge of adrenaline, I pushed against the door, and this time it opened. I stumbled outside, gasping for breath, the cool night air hitting me like a wave. I rushed to my car, throwing open the door and jumping inside. I fumbled with my keys, my hands shaking as I started the engine. The headlights pierced through the darkness, illuminating the empty parking lot. I glanced back at the motel, where shadows writhed and twisted in the windows, faces pressed against the glass, their eyes filled with longing. I tore out of the parking lot, heart racing, and as I drove into the night, I knew one thing. Some reservations are better left unmade, and some motels should remain forever empty. Story number eight. I pulled into the parking lot of the Crescent Moon Motel as dusk settled over the horizon. The place was old, with flickering neon lights that cast an eerie glow across the cracked pavement. After hours of driving, the only thing I wanted was a hot shower and a soft bed. The motel looked as if it had seen better days, but it was better than sleeping in my car. As I stepped inside the lobby, the bell above the door chimed softly. The air was thick with the smell of mildew and something else, something sweet and rotting. Behind the counter stood a woman in her fifties, her hair pulled back in a tight bun, wearing an apron that looked like it had seen teen too many spills. She looked up from a worn ledger, her eyes narrowing slightly. Evening, she said, her voice low and gravelly. What can I do for you? Just need a room for the night, I replied, trying to shake off the feeling of unease creeping over me. Room four is available, she said, sliding a key across the counter. You'll want to keep the door locked. The woods out back have a way of pulling folks in. Woods? I asked, raising an eyebrow. Just a warning. Strange things happen around here, especially at night, she said, her expression grave. Don't go wandering. I chuckled nervously, taking the key. I'll keep that in mind. I made my way to room four, the floorboards creaking underfoot. The door swung open, revealing a small, dimly lit room. The bed looked inviting enough, though the wallpaper peeled at the corners and the carpet felt sticky beneath my feet. I set my bag down and took a deep breath, attempting to shake off the ominous feeling settling in my gut. After a quick shower, I decided to watch some TV. As I flicked through channels, a news report caught my attention, a story about a series of mysterious disappearances in the area. My stomach dropped as I listened to the details. Each victim had vanished without a trace, their last known whereabouts often near the woods behind my motel. Suddenly, a loud knock at the door jolted me upright. I turned off the TV and held my breath, listening. Another knock echoed through the room, this one accompanied by a soft voice. Hello, is anyone there? The voice was feminine, tinged with desperation. I approached the door, heart racing. Who is it? I called out. Please, let me in. I need help, she pleaded, her voice trembling. I hesitated, the woman's tone filling me with concern. What's wrong? I asked, but the only response was a soft sob. Please, I can't stay out here. They're coming. Panic surged through me as I recalled the news report. Who was she? And what was she afraid of? The man's warning echoed in my mind. Are you in trouble? I asked cautiously. Who's coming? 
There was a moment of silence and then she whispered, The shadows, they're hungry, they want me. I took a step back, dread pooling in my stomach. I can't open the door, I stammered. I don't know you. Please, she cried, her voice rising in panic. If you don't let me in, they'll get me. I backed away from the door, my heart racing. I'm sorry, I can't. The knocking turned frantic, the woman's pleas turning into screams. Help, they're coming, let me in. I pressed my back against the wall, shaking my head. The panic in her voice was palpable, but something deep down told me to stay away. Just then, the lights flickered and the room grew cold. I could almost feel a presence lurking just outside the door. Suddenly, there was silence. The knocking stopped and the voice faded into the darkness. My heart pounded in my chest and I felt a wave of guilt wash over me. Had I just left someone in danger? I hesitated, my hand hovering over the doorknob. But as I reached for it, the door rattled violently, as if something were trying to force its way in. Let me in! Please! I'm begging you! I recoiled in terror, scrambling back toward the bed. The room felt alive, the walls closing in around me. I needed to escape. In a panic, I grabbed my bag and rushed toward the window. It was my only chance. As I shoved it open, a gust of wind rushed in, carrying with it a whispering chorus of voices. Help us, help us. I climbed out of the window and landed on the damp grass outside, the cool night air hitting me like a wave. I took a moment to catch my breath, glancing back at the motel. The lights flickered again, and I could have sworn I saw shadows moving behind the curtains. I turned and ran toward the woods, adrenaline fueling my flight. But as I got closer, I felt a strange pull, as if the trees were beckoning me in. I fought against it, shaking my head as I stumbled forward. I needed to get away. Just then, I heard the woman's voice again, clearer now. Help me, I'm lost, please. Stay away, I yelled, panic rising. I can't help you. But her voice continued to call, wrapping around me like a noose. I pressed forward, forcing myself to leave the motel behind. The trees grew thicker and the shadows danced around me, whispering secrets I couldn't understand. Suddenly, I tripped over a root, falling hard to the ground. As I looked up, I saw a figure emerging from the darkness. It was the woman, her face pale and eyes wide with terror. Please, she begged, you have to help me. But as she stepped closer, the shadows behind her writhed, coiling around her legs like serpents. I realized with a sickening dread that her eyes were voids, reflecting nothing but darkness. No! I screamed, scrambling to my feet. Stay back. I turned and ran deeper into the woods, branches clawing at my skin. The whispers grew louder, a cacophony of voices crying out in desperation. Help us! Help us! I ran until I could run no more, collapsing against a tree, gasping for breath. The darkness enveloped me, and I could feel the shadows creeping closer. I closed my eyes, trying to block out the terror. Then, silence. The whispers faded, and I opened my eyes, heart pounding. I was alone in the dark, the trees standing still and silent around me. I mustered the courage to stand, inching back toward the motel, but every step felt heavier, as if the woods were trying to pull me back. As I neared the edge of the trees, I spotted the neon sign flickering in the distance. It was a beacon of hope, and I sprinted toward it, pushing through the last of the underbrush. When I reached the motel, the lobby door was ajar, and the lights flickered ominously. I hesitated knowing I shouldn't go back in. But the shadows had already begun to stretch out, creeping across the ground, pulling me closer to the entrance. With a surge of desperation, I pushed through the door, but the lobby was empty, the air thick with the smell of decay. Hello? I called, but my voice echoed back, lost in the silence. Suddenly I heard a soft giggle, followed by the sound of light footsteps. I turned to see the woman standing there, her eyes wide and glistening with an unnatural light. You came back, she said, her voice sweet and inviting. No, I yelled, my body screaming to run. But the shadows swirled around her, drawing closer, and she grinned, revealing sharp teeth. You can't escape. <laughs> We've been waiting for you. My heart raced as I realized the truth. The motel was a trap, a haven for lost souls, and I had walked right into it. The shadows danced around me, pulling me into their embrace as I screamed. Help us. The voices echoed in my mind, and as the darkness closed in, I felt myself fading, becoming one with the shadows. The Crescent Moon Motel welcomed me and I became just another lost guest, waiting for the next traveler to check in. Story the end. Story number nine. The Crossroads Motel stood on the edge of town, a relic of a bygone era with its flickering neon sign and weathered exterior. As I drove in, the headlights illuminated the cracked, cracked pavement and the fading paint on the building. 
I had been on the road for hours, and the thought of spending the night in a cozy room was a relief. Little did I know, this night would be anything but restful. The lobby was dimly lit, filled with an assortment of old furniture and a musty smell that hinted at neglect. Behind the counter sat an elderly woman, her hair a tangled gray mess, her eyes sharp and knowing. She looked up as I entered, her gaze penetrating. Need a room? She asked, her voice low and gravelly. Yes, please. Just for one night, I replied, feeling a chill run down my spine at her intense stare. Room 7, she said, sliding a key across the counter. But be careful. This place has a history, and not all guests check out. I forced a smile, dismissing her ominous words as nothing more than a cliché. Thanks, I'll keep that in mind. As I headed down the dimly lit corridor, I could feel the weight of the building's age pressing in on me. The walls were lined with old photographs, their subjects appearing frozen in time, some smiling, others looking somber. I shook off the feeling of unease and opened the door to room 7. Inside, the room was small but functional. The bed was unmade, as if someone had just left in a hurry, and the air was thick with the smell of stale cigarettes. I tossed my bag onto the bed and walked over to the window, peering out into the darkness. The parking lot was empty, save for a few old cars that looked like they hadn't moved in years. As I settled in for the night, I turned on the TV to drown out the silence. Just as I began to relax, I heard a soft tapping noise. I paused, listening intently. It was coming from the wall rhythmic and persistent. Hello? I called out tentatively, half expecting an answer. The tapping continued, growing louder, almost as if it were trying to communicate. I pressed my ear against the wall, heart racing. What do you want? I whispered. The tapping abruptly stopped, replaced by a low whisper. Help me. My heart sank. I backed away from the wall, fear prickling at the edges of my mind. I grabbed my phone, its light illuminating the room, and took a deep breath. I couldn't just ignore it. Okay, if someone is there, I'm here to listen, I said, hoping for a response. The whisper returned, please, I need your help. The fear that had gripped me turned into a sense of determination. What do you need? I asked, my voice steadier now. Find me, before it's too late. The voice faded into silence. With a mixture of fear and curiosity, I grabbed my jacket and stepped out of the room. I needed to know more about this place. As I walked down the hallway, the air grew colder, the shadows seeming to stretch and shift around me. I approached the front desk, where the elderly woman still sat, her eyes fixed on me as if she had been waiting for me to come. Did you hear it? I asked, my voice trembling slightly. She nodded slowly, a knowing expression on her face. You've heard the whispers then. Who is it? What do they want? I pressed. They say it's the spirit of a young woman who was lost here. She never checked out, the woman replied her voice barely above a whisper. They found her car abandoned by the highway years ago, but her body was never found. People say she's trapped between worlds, waiting for someone to help her. Help her how? I asked, my heart racing. You need to find the place where she last was. It's the only way to set her spirit free, she explained, glancing nervously toward the exit. Where was that? I asked urgently. Follow the old road out of town. There's a bridge. She was last seen there, she said, her voice tinged with fear. Without thinking twice, I grabbed my keys and rushed out of the motel. The night air was thick with tension, and the moonlight cast eerie shadows across the landscape as I drove toward the old road. After a few minutes, I reached the bridge. The structure loomed before me, creaking in the wind. I stepped out of the car, my heart pounding as I approached the edge of the bridge. Below, the water rushed by, dark and unforgiving. Is anyone here? I called out, my voice echoing into the night. The wind picked up carrying a faint whisper on its breath. Help me. The sound sent chills down my spine. I'm here, I shouted, desperate to connect with whatever spirit was reaching out. I want to help you. The whisper became clearer, more urgent. I'm trapped. Please, find me. As I leaned over the edge of the bridge, I felt a sudden rush of cold air, and a figure emerged from the shadows below. It was a woman, her clothes tattered and her face pale, eyes wide with fear and desperation. Please, she cried, her voice a haunting echo. What happened to you? I asked, my heart racing. I was lost. I tried to escape, but he found me. He brought me here. She pointed toward the dark water below. I need you to remember me. I need you to find my body. Who did this to you? I asked, feeling a surge of anger. The man who brought me here, she said, tears streaming down her face. He tricked me. I thought he was helping me, but he wanted to keep me trapped. You have to remember my name. Your name, I asked, feeling the weight of her plea. What is it? 
Emily, she cried, her voice breaking. Please remember me. You have to help me find peace. Suddenly a chilling wind swept across the bridge and the figure began to fade. Emily, wait, I won't forget you. I shouted, panic rising in my chest. But she was gone, swallowed by the shadows. Desperate to honor her memory, I rushed back to my car and drove back to the motel, fueled by determination. I needed to find out what had happened to Emily and how I could help her spirit find peace. Once inside the motel, I returned to the lobby. The elderly woman looked up, her eyes narrowing. Did you see her? She asked, her voice trembling. Yes, I saw Emily, I replied, breathless. She needs help. I need to find her body. The woman's face paled. It's been years. No one ever found her. The bridge is where they say she vanished. I can't leave her like this, I insisted. What if I can find her? What if I can help her? The woman nodded slowly, her expression softening. If anyone can, it's you. But you'll need to go to the bridge and call her name. It's the only way. I grabbed my jacket and dashed out once more, heart pounding with urgency. As I drove back to the bridge, I felt an electric energy building around me, urging me onward. When I arrived, the moon hung low in the sky, illuminating the water below. I stepped onto the bridge, taking a deep breath. Emily, I shouted into the night. I'm here, I won't forget you. For a moment, silence enveloped me. Then, the wind picked up, swirling around me. Help me, came the faint whisper, echoing across the water. Emily, I'm here. I promise to help you find peace. I called, desperation threading through my voice. In an instant, the air grew colder, and I felt her presence beside me. Thank you, she whispered, her voice filled with relief. You've remembered me. With that, the moonlight brightened, illuminating the water below, and I saw her, a figure floating just beneath the surface, serene and peaceful. I could finally see her face, and I knew it was Emily. I'll help you, I promised, tears streaming down my cheeks. You're not alone anymore. With a powerful surge, the water began to swirl, and the figure of Emily emerged from the depths, glowing with an ethereal light. Thank you for freeing me, she said, her voice a soft caress on the wind. As she began to fade, I felt an overwhelming sense of peace wash over me. You're free now, Emily. Go find your rest, I whispered. With one last smile, she disappeared into the night, leaving behind a profound calm. I stood on the bridge, breathing in the cool night air, knowing I had helped a lost soul find her way. The whispers had faded, and as I turned to leave, I felt lighter, the burden of the past lifting from my shoulders. As I drove away from the Crossroads Motel, I knew I would carry Emily's memory with me forever. Some tales linger in the shadows, but others can finally find their peace. Story, the end. Story number 10. Motel Tales, The Haunting of Room 12. I pulled into the parking lot of the Whispering Pines Motel just as the sun dipped below the horizon. Its weathered sign creaked in the evening breeze, and the faint glow from the neon vacancy light seemed to beckon me inside. I had been on the road for far too long, and the promise of a hot shower and a soft bed was irresistible. The lobby was dimly lit, with worn carpets and walls adorned with faded photographs of smiling families. Behind the counter stood a young woman, her dark hair cascading over her shoulders as she typed away at an old computer. She looked up, her smile friendly, but her eyes holding a flicker of something more. Evening. Need a room? She asked, her voice warm and inviting. Yes, please. Just for one night, I replied, trying to shake off the sense of unease that had settled over me. Room 12 is available, she said, handing me a tarnished key. But be warned. Some say it's a little haunted. I chuckled nervously, brushing it off as another ghost story designed to frighten weary travelers. I can handle it. I said confidently. Just keep the light on, she added, her tone suddenly serious. You'll be fine, but just remember, if you hear anything strange, don't ignore it. As I headed down the narrow corridor to room 12, I felt a chill crawl up my spine. The wallpaper was peeling and the air was thick with the smell of mildew. I shook my head, trying to dismiss my discomfort. Upon entering the room, I found it small but cozy, with a double bed covered in a faded floral comforter. The air felt stale, but I attributed that to the age of the motel. I tossed my bag onto the bed and walked over to the window, pulling back the curtains to reveal the darkening parking lot below. As night fell, I settled onto the bed with a book, the words blurring together as my exhaustion took hold. I drifted in and out of sleep until a soft sound jolted me awake, a faint whispering that seemed to seep through the walls. Help me, help me. Heart racing, I sat up, straining to listen. The voice was barely audible a distant plea echoing in the stillness of the room. I shook my head, convincing myself it was just my imagination. 
I reached for my phone, scrolling through social media to distract myself. But the whispers continued, growing louder and more urgent. Help me, please. I threw the covers off and crept toward the wall, pressing my ear against it. The sound was clearer now, a desperate cry for help. Who's there? I called out, my voice shaky. Help me, came the reply, more distinct this time. Panic surged within me, and I pulled back, staring at the wall as if expecting it to answer. With a deep breath, I gathered my courage and opened the door, stepping into the dimly lit hallway. The air felt heavy, charged with an energy that sent shivers down my spine. I approached the end of the corridor, where room 13 stood ominously, the door slightly ajar. Against my better judgment, I pushed the door open and peered inside. The room was dark, the curtains drawn tight, and a musty smell hung in the air. As I stepped inside, I felt a rush of cold air sweep past me, sending goosebumps across my skin. Help me. The whisper came again, clearer now, resonating from the far corner of the room. I felt compelled to follow the sound, heart racing as I moved deeper into the room. As I approached the far wall, I noticed an old mirror hanging crookedly. The glass was clouded with age, but something about it drew me in. I stepped closer, and the whispers intensified, swirling around me like a chilling wind. Help me. A voice echoed again, and I gasped as I saw her reflection. A young woman with hollow eyes staring back at me from the glass. Her hair was disheveled, and her lips moved silently, forming words that I couldn't hear. Who are you? I breathed, fear tightening around my chest. Find me, she whispered, and suddenly the room around me grew darker, the air thickening as if something unseen was closing in. I stumbled back, my heart racing. What do you want from me? I shouted, but the whispers only grew louder, drowning out my voice. Find me. Find me. The echoing pleas filled my ears as the mirror began to shimmer, revealing a hazy image of a young woman trapped in darkness, her hands pressed against the glass as if trying to escape. With a sudden surge of bravery, I grabbed my phone and switched on, on the flashlight. I illuminated the mirror and the figure froze, her eyes locking onto mine. Please, help me, she begged, tears streaming down her face. What happened to you? I asked, my voice trembling. I was taken, he locked me away, no one knows. Her voice cracked with desperation. You have to find my body. You have to free me. Where? I asked, my mind racing. Where do I find you? Under the floor, beneath the mirror, she whispered. And as she spoke, the mirror began to pulse with energy, the air vibrating around me. I felt a surge of determination. I had to help her. I backed away from the mirror, searching the room for something to pry it off the wall. I grabbed a small chair and used it to leverage the mirror off its hooks, heart pounding as it clattered to the floor. Dust swirled around me as I knelt to inspect the area beneath. The floorboards creaked ominously, and with trembling hands I began to pull them up, revealing a dark void below. My flashlight illuminated something buried beneath the floor, a small wooden box. With my heart racing, I pulled it free and opened it. Inside lay a tarnished locket and a note, its edges frayed and yellowed with age. I read the note aloud, To my beloved, I will always wait for you. Please find me again. As I held the locket, the whispers returned, filling the room with an almost tangible energy. Thank you. Thank you. The voice of the woman echoed, and I looked up to see her figure slowly fading from the mirror. Is this yours? I asked, holding up the locket. Is this how I can help you? Yes, she replied, her voice softening. Take it to the place where I was taken. It will set me free. Suddenly, the mirror shattered, shards of glass scattering across the floor, but I felt a rush of warmth as her spirit surged toward me. Thank you, she whispered one last time, her figure dissolving into the light. I stood in the wreckage of the room, my heart pounding with a mix of fear and triumph. I had found her, and now she was free. With the locket clutched tightly in my hand, I left room 13 and returned to the lobby, where the young woman behind the counter looked up with a knowing expression. You helped her, didn't you? She asked softly. Yes, I did, I replied, feeling a sense of closure wash over me. Room 12 has been haunted for years, she said, a hint of relief in her voice. Thank you for finally giving her peace. As I left the motel behind, the weight of the world felt lighter. I glanced back at the whispering pines, the once ominous structure now bathed in soft moonlight. I had helped a lost soul find her way home, and the air felt clearer as I drove away, knowing I would carry Emily's story with me forever. Some tales linger, but others can finally find their peace. Story the end.